Houston attorney Tony Busby put out a press release yesterday saying that they were going to have a press conference today talking about the 120 um, alleged victims of Diddy and people in his organization. And he dropped some knowledge. He dropped some things today, some alleged information today. 120 alleged victims is a lot. Um, but this article is coming out of USA Today. Sean Diddy Combs accused of SA abuse by over 100, um, well, is 120 people, attorney says. Texas-based lawyer Tony Busby announced the pending civil lawsuits during a press conference Tuesday. The attorney revealed he's representing 120 accusers who are bringing allegations of a violent SA rape, facilitated X with controlled substance, dissemination of video recordings, and SA of minors against the embattled music mogul. We will expose the enablers who enabled this conduct behind closed doors. We will pursue this matter no matter who the evidence implicates. Busby added, it's a long list already, but because of the nature of this case, we are going to make damn sure that we're right before we do that. But the names that we're going to name are names that are going to shock you. I really hope that they name names. This new wave of legal action follows Combs' September arrest and subsequent arraignment for X trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in um, prostitution charges. The rapper who has maintained his innocence amid an avalanche of civil lawsuits alleging actual and physical abuse over the past year remains in custody at the special housing unit at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center. The cases brought by 60 men and 60 women span incidents going back as far as 1991. 25 of the accusers were minors when they were allegedly assaulted by Combs. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14. We have one who was 15. Combs' legal team denied any false and defamatory claims against him. As Mr. Combs' legal team has emphasized, he cannot address every meritless allegation and what has become a reckless media circus. Combs attorney Erica Wolf said in an email statement to USA Today Tuesday, he looks forward to proving his innocence and vindicating himself in court where the truth will be established based on evidence, not speculation. Um, attorney Tony Busby called claims gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. Busby previously announced his law firm will pursue claims against Combs on Saturday in an Instagram post, adding that many were minors when the alleged incidents took place. This group of brave individuals include both men and women. Many were minors when the abuse occurred. Some of these brave individuals reported the incidents to police. Others did not. Each individual story is gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. The acts complained of occurred at hotels, private homes, and also at the infamous Diddy free golf parties. The violations against this group of individuals are mind boggling and can only be described as the botchery and the brave, um, depravity exacted by powerful people against minors and the weak. Okay, so USA Today doesn't go into the stats that um, I saw on some of these videos. And the videos are circulating. Um, if you're on my YouTube page, I'll just attach it to the end. But, um, but they were saying that about 60% of the, the 120 accusers are black, 30% are white, and um, the rest are Hispanic and Asian. They said it's half and half as far as 60 men and 60 women. Um, and um, I've already said that 25 of these people were minors at the time. So this, it, and he said that he is going to be going after and naming names. So I really hope that these names get dropped, like he said, because I, I'm of the type that I do not believe in sacred cows. Many of these people, somebody had to know something, somebody participated, somebody hid the truth, somebody knew something. And all of these people need to have a light 
on them and the skeletons need to tumble out of the closet. Now, I do want them to name names. I do want that to happen. But what people have been doing are sharing pictures of Diddy at these white parties as if the white parties equate to the freak offs. Just because he took a picture with somebody is not evidence that these people knew what was going on. So here's a picture that Ethan shared with Diddy and the late Aretha Franklin. Just because he took a picture with Aretha Franklin does not mean that she participated in a freak off. Like Denisha Carter says, do you guys not realize that Diddy was incredibly famous, therefore knew almost everyone and threw many parties that were likely just parties? Yes, people had photos with him who had no idea what he was up to and certainly weren't involved. These witch hunts remove focus from the actual villain. Uh, listen to this part, listen to this part. Abusers do not abuse everyone. They cannot abuse everyone. They rely on good relationships with many to get away with abusing the few. And this is something that narcissists do. They know how to mask. They know how to create relationships. They do this on purpose so that when people run out and like or want to say something, they know that they can't. Because that other person has a great relationship with all these people over there. So th that's the reason why, that's the reason why, um, you know, narcissists do what they do. They're not going to show who they are to everybody. So all of these sharing of pictures, that does not particularly matter. Anyways, let, let's, let's see what happens. I'm definitely going to be watching this case because this case to me, is it seems like it's going to have a lot of tentacles that start touching a lot of people. But I do want to know what you think about all of this going down. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and had screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who wouldn't otherwise for a variety of reasons are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. The feckless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. We did not enter this fray blindly. I wish it was my last such fray. I wish this type of hate behavior wasn't so pervasive, but it is what it is, so we will press on. As I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. You should know, in this group, it is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identify as African American, 30% are white, and the remainder are Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. I don't want to focus on the ages of these victims. 
When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till t this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. Now, although most of the victims who have stepped forward were victimized after 2015, this has been going on for a very long time. Now, when you think about the fact that some of this conduct occurred 25 years ago, and you wonder why would it take somebody so long to step forward, I want to remind you that, that many states in the United States have recognized that it's very difficult for a victim to step forward and to make these types of allegations when something very terrible has happened to them. I'll use New York, the state of New York, as an example. The state of New York has specific statutes in place that revive claims that are even claims that would typically be not able to be brought, that revive such claims, and they can be brought even 25 to 30 years later. Because there's a recognition there in New York and California and other states that it's very difficult for a victim to come forward. And I would, I would respectfully suggest the only reason many of these people are coming forward because they see other victims coming forward. And it gives them some comfort that, hey, I won't be the only one. And I expect more victims will come forward.